hello, and welcome back to Suzerain with the Republic of Swordland. In today's episode, we can go to Whole Sword with our discussion on the current current eternal affairs. Maybe we can get some money as well. <laughs> At some point, you know. Maybe. <laughs> also, maybe I can get some money as well. A storm was on the horizon outside my window. The inside of my office, however, was very warm and cozy. I straightened myself on the sofa next to the fireplace and looked at Manson, who was sitting on the couch across from me, and was here representing all eight bluish members of the assembly. He had dark creases under his eyes from lack of sleep. As I said er earlier, we've been working on this bill for a long time, Mr. President. I've always done my best to represent my people, and you keep getting blocked in the assembly. We can't have this happen again. I've always brought my vo people's concerns to the assembly and raised my voice whenever our rights were in question. Oh yes, the assembly at least have a proper discussion. But all that we get is disrespect. MPs shouting racial slurs at us, not allowing us to speak, and it's not only the National Front. He stopped for a moment, repositioned himself on the seat. I don't even remember a time when Miss Tory allowed me to finish a speech. The assembly does not take us independent seriously. We need your help. I understand you, Mr. Leak. This discrimination against you is unacceptable. That's where your help would be very valuable. He gestured at the papers I'd received from him earlier. All we need is for your support on this bill. It's time to undo the mistakes of the sword estate against its citizens. Let me ask you to help us make this single step for good instead of staying idle. Our proposal aims to form a committee for minority rights, and we lift the band on the British Freedom Party, as well as giving amnesty to all of those who were arrested for having ties to it. The families are still waiting for them in Verdia. It's not Char Consoles era anymore. It's time we try to clean up the taint he left in our history. I agree with you completely, Mr. Leak. Thank you for representing this noble cause. Glad to hear it, Mr. President. He rubbed his chin. So, we have your support? Yes, I'll form the commission and sign your proposal as a decree. Thank you, Mr. President. He rose up and walked up to me. He extended a hand. It means a lot. Thank you. We shook hands. I don't even care if it'll cost me more money, lose the election, whatever. Let's go for it. <laughs> <laughs> My guy's going wild. We don't care anymore. Suddenly, we heard a knock on the door, and Lucian entered. Sir, I'm sorry. I thought your meeting was over. Mr. President has already decided. We can call it over, Mr. Gallade. I was already reading. Great. Then we must be go to the meeting room, sir. One of our new campaign advisors has some plans for the election. He's waiting for us. Let's go. Minority Rights Act. Section 1 of the new legislation establishes a Minority Rights Commission dedicated to advocating for the rights of all minority groups residing in Swordland. In Section 2, the ban on the British Freedom Party and other British political parties is lifted, promoting political inclusivity. Section 3 grants amnesty to the British prisoners previously arrested for their separatist activities, aiming to foster reconciliation and social cohesion. Democratic Republic of Vagsland is, uh, I don't know why it got sent over to you, because you don't have an event for me. Rumberg plane warned inside airspace. A lone Rumbergian airplane violated our airspace by entering the territory of Swordland for two minutes and left after issuing a radio message. What's the... can you tell me the radio message? Ladies' bill struck down. Families in Swordland can breathe easier as the controversial Women's Literation Act proposed by the Ministry of Education Sierra Walda with the blessing of First Lady Monica Rain completely failed to pass. The bill, which would have upended Swordland's traditional values by forcing undue burdens on women in the name of equality, was supported by the President, but struck down in the Assembly, showing Anton Rain who wears the trousers in this government. Well, you know, it happens. The British Rights Act was signed into law by President Rain by decree yesterday. As the name suggests, the main purpose of the act is to normalize, legalize, and even justify British separatist sentiment. The act revoked the ban on the British Freedom Party, which was previously closed for their close ties to militant British Freedom Front, and gives amnesty for previous British political prisoners who might have been involved with crimes against the Swordish people. The Hussard Post condemns this decision. Protect Women Act signed. In a massive step forward for Swordish, Swordland women, domestic violence became illegal throughout the country, thanks to a bill proposed by the government's new Women's Rights Commission. Supported by Education Minister Ciara Walda, the commission had originally pushed for sweeping new laws regulating equality among the sexes in schools and workforce. While these failed to pass, given the number of conservatives in the assembly, the Protect Women Act in itself is a remarkable achievement. 
Bluish right act. In a surprising move, President Rain has revoked past anti bluish policies and decided to do something right for the Bluish citizens by signing the Bluish Rights Act into law. We well, don't know whether the Minority Rights Commission that will be formed as a part of this act will actually manage to decrease racial inequality. The new law tries to do undo past mistakes by revoking the ban on Democratic Party of the BFP and giving amnesty to sole heir of prisoners who have been prosecuted under ridiculous accusations. Rain's move to reverse Trump and Soul's ban on the BFP has been welcomed by many blue citizens. Manson Leak, has cam who campaigned heavily for the bill, has sought to express his gratitude for the confirmation of new laws, saying it is a step in the right direction for the Bluetooth people. We're gonna get so many Bluetooth votes, and that's it. <laughs> that's literally it. <laughs> we're gonna get wrecked. But we're gonna get Bluetooth votes. A Kishia's dual approach to refugees. Amidst rising religious persecution in the United Kratana and several headline CSP nations, Republic of Arcacia has opened its doors, repositioning itself as a beacon of hope for the oppressed. To manage the influx, the Arcacian government has implemented a program in integrating these refugees into the workforce, addressing both the nation's labor needs and providing meaningful employment to newcomers. Beneficiaries of the program receive housings and various socio-economic benefits. Ensuring their tra transition is as smooth as possible. While some critics argue that this strategy could be viewed as opportunistic, many experts praise Arcacia for its dual approach, offering safe haven and economic opportunity. The refugees in return contribute significantly to the nation's growing sectors, especially in agriculture and manufacturing. By harnessing the the potential of these individuals, Arkeshi is not only enhancing its own economy, but also sending a clear signal against religious intolerance and in favor of human rights. That's nice. Alright. Alcohol Tax Acts Act. The Grand National Assembly introduces the Alcohol Tax Act, ATA, as a dual measure to curb excessive alcohol consumption and boost tax revenue. Section 1, the ATA mandates a 20% tax on all alcohol products sold within the country. The measure serves not only as a deterrent to excessive alcohol consumption by raising the cost of alcohol beverages, but also establish a consistent source of government revenue. Section 2 of the ATA promotes domestic industry by making local alcohol production dis destined for export exempt from uh, affirmative taxation. This provision seeks to bolster competitiveness of local producers in the international market while maintaining the aim of reducing domestic alcohol consumption. Section 3 of the ATA applies a 25% import tax on foreign alcohol producers imported from countries that do not ha currently have any trade related imposed on alcohol related goods. This policy aims to level the playing field for domestic producers and increase the the overall tax revenue. Sign. We will sign that. Alcohol consumption reduced. With the alcohol tax increased nationwide, the consumption and importation of alcoholic products have dropped significantly. This unexpected decrease in alcohol related crime across the country has been welcomed by law enforcement and citizens alike. Woo! Rain put a, to put a lid on alcohol consumption. The Grand National Assembly has signed the Alcohol Tax Act. To deter the excessive amount of alcohol consumption that has recently been plaguing Swordland, drunken disorderly youth will quickly learn that their actions have consequences, and they will soon be paying a further 20% tax on all alcohol products in the country. I like the idea of taxing stuff instead of banning stuff. You know? Make me more money, and still allow them to have it. Well, giving me more money, you know? Good, good capitalism right there. Fair Luxury Tax Act. In an endeavor to enhance the equal, equi equity of the taxation system and augment tax revenues, the Grand National Assembly introduces the Fair Luxury Tax Act, FLTA. This act proposes an amendment to Section 4 of the Tax Code of 4 1949. Section 1 of the FLTA determines a 15% tax rate on luxury goods, as categorized by the Ministry of Economy. The definition of luxury goods under this act includes, but is not limited to, jewelry, furs, sports cards, yachts, and private planes. The implementation of this tax is intended to ensure that those with the means to purchase such items contribute proportionally to the state's revenue. Section 2 of the FLTA establishes a 10% estate tax applicable in situations of purchase, sale, and property transfer, particularly in cases of inheritance. This measure seeks to promote fairness of the tax system, ensuring that significant wealth transfers contribute approximately to the state revenue, while also deteriorating large-scale wealth accumulations through inheritance. Hmm. The thing is, I want to do this. I want that government budget 100%. I could use that. But I have rich friends, and I don't know how they'll think about this. But we're going to do it. I don't know how people, some people feel about that. 
Oh, I've signed 10 bills, lawmaker. Increased luxury good prices. The recent past luxury goods tax has been implemented to target the wealthy population and their extravagant spending habits. This resulted in a significant increase in the prices of luxury items such as jewels, furs, sports cards, yachts, and private planes across Swordland. Luxury is now taxable. The Assembly has signed an implement known as the Fair Luxury Tax Act. The bold choice seeks to impose a tax hike on personal items, including jewelry, coats, and cars. Believing that necessary products or loving gifts are all considered luxury projects is the hard reality we are facing under the Lane administration, as they are determined to steal your hard-earned money out from under you. Well, you know, I'm not funding any of them. But, uh, the possibility of funding a political youth group has arisen. We can potentially expand our ideological reach and bolster our election efforts. The presidency would discreetly allocate substantial government funds to the youth wing, integrating them into the state as part of the essential institutions, in exchange for their loyalty and support. Neither of these groups like me. Emergency call on escalating situation. Residents of the president of Swordland. Whole sword. I was woken up in the middle of the night by a call from the De Ministry of Defense. Due to the sensitivity of the information, I had to urgently brief in person. Put on my clothes as fast as I could. I rushed downstairs and opened the door. Serge was waiting for me. Mr. President, this way to the car, please. We got into the car and made our way to the Ministry of Defense building without a word. Oh, I can't, get to t can't talk to Serge. No, I want to talk to Serge. Fine. I arrived and was directed downstairs. I came to a set of large doors and quickly read the sign above them. The sign read, War Room. The dimly lit room was filled with cutting-edge equipment, the latest video screens, long-range radio electronics, and other devices used for communication, presentation, and planning. The centerpiece of the room was a large round table with a coat of arms of swordland engraved on it. David, Lucian, Valken, and Izov, already deep in discussion. I agree with your sentiments, Mr. Lancia. Going to war is simply too risky. We must maintain peace in Swordland and Eastern Arcopa at all costs. I agree. We have much to lose. Have some faith in our soldiers. We have much to lose against what exactly? Mr. President. Thank you for coming at this late hour. There is a situation. Falcon, please go ahead and provide your report. Mr. President, approximately 20 minutes ago, Rumber downed one of our planes with anti-aircraft fire from the ground. The pilot was declared KIA. The last recorded position of the plane was inside Swordish airspace. General Kruger, I mean no offense, but are we absolutely sure that is the case? Are you sure this happened within our borders? No offense taken. Here are the locations on the map and the reports from the airbase. He pointed to several markers on the map. No answer to your question? Yes, we are absolutely sure. You can see here on the map that the plane was downed, approximately 10 kilometers inside our borders. Well, hey, fair, no offense taken, here's the information, bam, there you go, good, good work. Hey, I don't exactly love you as a person, but you are doing good work, so I will say good job. We have calculated the trajectory of the gunfire, and they started firing when our plane was within our border. The plane was down near Hulgen. Hmm. This is terrible, what should we do? We need to open diplomatic channels to start an official investigation. Most importantly, we need to remain calm. We must maintain peace. I agree, they are trying to lure us into their trap. Under different circumstances, I would say we should strike back. But the current status of our military is apparent. We are not adequately equipped for such a foe. I agree with Mr. Galley. We need to utilize diplomacy. We can't look... I, I actually, I've had playthroughs where I did not like you, but this playthrough, I think we have gotten along surprisingly well. Like, my Ministry of Defense, I li I've had a good relationship with you and your ideas this playthrough. We can't look weak. We will appear weak. They will jump on the opportunity. We must order a military retaliation immediately. Did you start losing your common sense, General Valken? You know the state our army is in right now. A retaliation is too risky. When your job's not risky, Mr. Lancia. Mr. President, our army's ready to do whatever it takes to protect Swordland. Gentlemen, before it comes to that, we can prevent further bloodshed by using diplomacy. The room fell silent before Isa finally spoke up. Mr. Pres Mr. President, what are your orders? We will approach this di diplomatically and try to de-escalate the situation by any means. No one wants war. Lucian tensed up, but shoulders relaxed. Thank you, sir. 
I will immediately begin working on it. With Mr. Whiskey's capabilities, I am sure that we will de-escalate the situation successfully. We will keep you updated on our progress. This is our best bet. If you ask me, this is just plain old weakness we are showing them right now. I am frankly disappointed, Mr. President. If we can't even retaliate at such an attack, what will become of the country in the future? Peace must be maintained at all costs. I am saying this as a man who has seen too many years of war. We are not the ones that are attacking the peace. Regardless, it looks like your decision has been made, Mr. President. I know when I am not needed. I will take my leave. Before he left the room, he saluted. I saluted in real life, which did nothing because you can't see it. Well, now that we know the way forward, I have an idea, Mr. President. I think she will hold a military parade to display our strength. I am with Mr. Lancey on this one. This should work well as a deterrent, and it will come in handy as a tool to de-escalate the situation. That is a good idea. Simple and effective without causing any ruckus. That makes sense. Organize the military parade. Under understood. That is all, Mr. President. I will keep you updated on the situation. For now, have a good night's sleep. You will need it. I couldn't sleep at all that night. Ugh, this is messing with our economy. Darn you. Darn you. Wellen raising concerns over Runberg posturing. Amidst escalating tensions in the region, Wellen's president, Victor Smolik, has issued a statement raising concerns about Runberg's aggressive maneuvers. Expressing unease over Runberg's continuous support for the British Freedom Front, Smolik warned Swordland to stay vigilant. This warning comes on the heels of recent aerial engagements between Swordland and Runberg, further inflaming the already volatile atmosphere. Well, maybe if you were actually, you know, able to, you know, help me. Swordish plane shot down. A Swordish airplane has been shot down by Rumbergian anti-aircraft guns, allegedly for violating Rumbergian airspace. Government officials said the airplane was shot inside the airspace of Swordland. Our plane was shot down when it was flying near Halgen over the territory of Swordland by an anti-aircraft missile. Our pilot would not threaten Rumberg in any way, said Isaac Valencia, the Minister of Defense. Despite the revealed evidence from the Swordish officials, the Queen of Rumberg, Beatrice Livingston, had the guts to claim that our plane was shot for violating their airspace. This is truly a heinous act, purposely done by our rivals in the north. This tragic event will be have severe consequences for Swordish Swordland Rumberg relations. Full sword. Urgent meeting on potential alliances. Yeah, we we need to get alliances going stacked. I was sitting right across from David in the White Room for, after he scheduled an urgent meeting. I knew the matter must have been serious. He insisted on waiting for Izoff and Lucian, so he did. Lucian entered the room with Izoff by his side. Mr. President, I came as fast as we could. Mr. President, Mr. Whiskey, what is going on? David cleared his voice. Welcome, everyone. Due to the potential ramifications, I wanted everyone to be present for this meeting. We have received an envoy from Arcacia. They are requesting a state visit. Judging from the current climate, it is not hard to see what this is about. ATO is always trying to expand its influence, after all. They will most likely try to convince us to join. In addition, as part of the state visit, Dwight Walker will of course meet you in person, Mr. President. Hmm. There's something we could gain from this state visit. I bet we, he will come asking us to cooperate under the guise of enforcing their demands to join the ATO. This will antagonize half the world against us, and we are going to be at the forefront of the battle. With the courage of our troops and our allies, we can defend our nation against anyone. I assure you, we don't need outside help. Definitely not from Dwight Walker. I, let's see what he wants first. I will decide when we talk to him. We need to be careful. Mr. Walker never gives anything for free. There will be some concessions for sure. Mr. Whiskey, you are the most experienced foreign policy expert. What's your take on this? What, what do you think is the right action? Romberg is bound to increase diplomatic pressure in the upcoming AN meeting. Back channels are reporting rumors about Queen Beatrice Livingston meeting with military leaders in Thornburg. I'm afraid it might not be possible to stand for Romberg without strong allies, so we will have to take side in this global rivalry to avert a potential conflict with Romberg. And I recently found out a planned meeting between the Queen of, and Chairman of Malus United Cortana. The A2 and President Walker might be a necessary evil to stop worse things from happening. I say we should consider this offer very seriously. Lucian, what do you think? We heard our experts. You are the one who has to decide, sir. Very well. Accept their offer. 
I will send a response immediately. Then there's the tiny deal we need to get over with. It. How should we welcome their delegation, sir? Make it as extravagant as you can. We need to impress them. As you wish, I have taken note. I, I'm not a military nation, so I think a military would not be the best opening. I think that is all for today. Thank you all for attending. As you dispersed, the world map hanging on the wall in the room caught my attention. I walked over to it. How often were the lines on the world map redrawn over the recent decades? What about the future? Well, we'll have to wait and see. Expanded human rights. In recent years, Swordland has undergone significant reforms aimed at improving the human rights situation in the country. These reforms have included strengthening the rule of law, promoting gender equality, and increasing protection for minority groups. Woo! Let's go! Limited security powers. The limitation of our pol police forces have unfortunately led to a higher rate of tragic crimes. But we are making efforts to improve the situation. Some suspected individuals who do not meet security criteria have been apprehended, which has contributed to a decrease in crime nationwide. Okay, so we've got a bit of a middle ground so far. Let's get the state visit of President Walker. The door of the car opened and flashes went off. The White Walker, President of Arcacia, head of the ATO, came out of the car, smiling and waving at the enormous crowd that gathered. It was not every day an Arcacian present came to visit Swordland, after all. Both sides of the marine carpet leading up to the palace were lined up with soldiers wearing military uniforms of the Kingdom of Swordland era. They had swords, shields, spears, and some of them were on horseback. As soon as President Walker stopped on the carpet, children appeared and showered the road with roses. He started. He slowly started walking towards us. It was then the centuries-old swordish sword dancer started. The show took a minute at most, and President Walker watched it quietly with a stern face, nodding. Lucian approached my side and quietly whispered, Is this to your liking, sir? It looks good, Lucian. Good job. Thank you. <laughs> I like it. I actually really like how, like, wild and crazy this is. Like, it's actually really fun. Let, see, let's bring the fun to politics. That's what we gotta do. Seeing that President Walker was approaching, Lucius stood back. Finally, I was in reaching distance to one of the most powerful men in the world. He looked at Monica first, bowed, and kissed her hand for a second longer than I'd like. Mr. Rain, if you told me I would get to meet your lovely life, I would have come sooner. I'm charmed, Miss Rain. Oh my, thank you, Mr. Walker. It's a pleasure to meet you. No, the pleasure is all mine, Miss Rain. I hope your wife and the family is well. They are very well, Miss Rain. Thank you. Unfortunately, I couldn't make it here today. And who do we have here, Mr. President? It is a good, so good to finally meet you. We shook hands. I wanted to meet you for the longest time. I assure you, the feeling is mutual. That's why I'm here, in fact. We started walking towards the reception hall in the palace. Our path was clear to people at once. He was simply looking around at the extraordinary interior design of the Moon Palace. Statues, painting, and various ornaments filled both sides of the corridor. He passed the corridor and entered the reception hall. The crowd inside was composed of various politicians and state figures. Upon our entry, they started clapping. <laughs> Drive martinis were handed to both of us. Everyone, let's give a warm welcome to our guest of honor. People started clapping. Thank you, Mr. President. It is a really good it is really good to be here. And thank you everyone for the warm welcome. With another thunderous round of applause, the jazz band started playing. That that's that's jazz, okay? President Walker and I separated and started mingling with the crowd. The reception was in full swing. After some time chatting with the attendees, President Walker approached us. He bowed before my wife. Miss Rain, can I call you Monica? She looked over at me before smiling. Yes, of, yes, of course, if I can call you Dwight. He took her hand and they started dancing. I turned around to talk to the waiter. I was into my third martini when I heard a whistle. I turned around and saw Monica dancing very closely with President Walker. All eyes in the room were on them. President Walker grabbed Monica's waist. I'll interject and dance with Monica. I moved on in and caught an opportunity to take Monica's hand. We started dancing. We hadn't danced since our wedding. I was struggling to remember the right steps. President Walker was watching us with his arms crossed and a smile on his face. It's right, right, left, right. 
As Monica whispered the steps in my ear, I follow along. At first hesitantly, then smoother and more confident. It was starting to come back to me. The band played on. For a moment, it felt like it was the only two of us in the room. We moved together as one, seeming seamlessly gliding across the dance floor. At some point, a spotlight began shining on us. As the song came to an end, I spun Monica around and dramatically dipped her on the last beat. Applause and whistles echoed around us. We went back to the bar. You saved me, Monica. At your service, Mr. President. <laughs> Ooh. President Walker approached, clapping and whistling himself. Bravo, bravo. Well done. I never took you for a dancer, Mr. Rain. That goes both ways, Mr. Walker. I do practice my free time, but I could never hope to be as good as you. The waiter come by, and we swapped our empty glasses with the filled ones. Let's talk about some business, shall we? The president and I swapped our drinks for Ellery Maroon, 30 years old. I knew a special spot. With our drinks at hand, we went down the stairs to the basement. Gradually, the music and the sound of the party started to fade away. We arrived at a cozy little quarter office. With not much inside, other than a table and a comfortable chairs. He took his seat, and I followed suit. He pulled out two cigars. Um, I don't smoke, Mr. Walker. Thanks. The, these are the best cigars in the world, I guarantee it. Are you sure? Well, you wouldn't put it like that. Sure. He pulled out a Rippo lighter and lit my cigar before lighting his own. I heard you got into a scandal. Something about a secretary? Truly an unfortunate chain of events. Indeed, he grinned. Relax, it's just a scandal and I'm no reporter. I just made it out alive of a bad one myself. Oof, it was a rough one, too. You get used to it, and a couple people in prison, a couple people silenced, you know the drill. Cheers to your survival, then, Mr. Rain. We clink glasses. Um, do I have another? And, um... Only one of those is actual glass. The other one's the bottle, but, you know, that made a... Oh, actually, I could probably just clink it to the table. There, that made it, that, that was closer to the sound. There we go. I don't know why I always have to clink glasses in real life when I, when I say that in game, but I have to. I gotta have the realistic noises. I don't know why. <laughs> I just feel like it. Ah, uh, this is a really good one. Very smoky. I like it. Never had an Aerolory Marine before? He took a puff from his cigar, filling the small room with smoke. Definitely miles better than Vagslandian whiskey. But I like lesbian whiskey more. It pairs better with their cigars. You see, Mr. Rain, whiskeys are a little bit like countries. Some are stronger, some are weaker, some are older, some are younger. Many are complex, but sometimes simple is the best. I personally like stronger whiskey in general. That's why I like this one. Yes, it's definitely promising. But whatever you drink, in the end, it all boils down to your taste. I assure you, Mr. Resident, my sense of taste is very refined. What type of whiskey do you like? I like complex flavors. As good as they are, they can get tiring. He tugged at his tie to loosen it a little. You know why I'm here. I want to make you an offer. I'm listening. Good. Listen closely. Times are changing and so is the balance of the world. Soon instead of a fractured world, we will see a more united world. There's us, ATO, against them. I want you by our side, the winning side. I think there's much we can achieve together, and you've shown me the proof. If you accept, I would like to extend you a warm welcome to ATO as a full member state. This, of course, comes with lots of privileges and responsibilities. In ATO, we protect each other. We have a mutual defense clause in the case of war. Join us, Mr. Rain, and you will have the entire backing of ATO. Soldiers, jet fighters, warships, whatever you like. During peacetime, you'll get the effects even more. Our combined production output will be benefit both Swordland and ATO. We'll have a free trade zone agreements, free visa access, investments, you name it. All I ask in turn is mutual loyalty to one another in the pact. The Swordish Armed Forces will be a member of ATO military structure. All branches, be it Air, Navy, Army, will collaborate with the Alliance Network. You'll provide assistance and training for free. Our armies will learn how to fight together and be stronger than ever in the face of malignous threat. Let's make history here tonight. What do you say?
Is that all you were asking for? I was expecting more demands. But why, Mr. Rain? In my mind, we are already aligned. Where, I c where I'm coming from is more so from the perspective of friendship and stability in Eastern Rokopa. There's much to gain for both of us, which makes this the perfect partnership. Very well, I accept. That's what I like to hear. We stood up and should shook hands. Welcome to ATO, Mr. Rain. Welcome home. Cheers to newfound friendship or partnership. We clinked our glasses and downed the remaining whiskey. Um, go, 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 go. I drank some water. Does that count? Now it's starting to taste better. Let's go upstairs, Mr. Rain. We have much to discuss, but more importantly, we need to celebrate. Besides, I have a few more dance moves to show off. Woo! We are now, um... <laughs> that's a... That's a few... That's a few updated things. Just a couple. Swordish General Staff. The Swordish, um... General staff, comprising esteemed and seasoned generals, serves as a pivotal military planning body. This esteemed assembly of top-ranking officers engages in particular strategies in coordinating and develop comprehensive plans and strategies that optimizes the military's operational efficiency and ensure the successful execution of defense objectives. ATO off. Yeah, yeah, that's the one. <laughs> ATO officers engage in close partnership with the Swordish generals. Diligent diligently exchanging and imparting their contemporary strategies and innovative tactics and specialized training to the Swordish soldiers. This collaborative endeavor serves to fortify the skills and person profe proficiency of the Swordish military, enabling them to adapt and thrive in ever-evolving operation environments. Adequately equipped military. The military of Swordland has been equipped with modern and advanced weaponry and and equipment to ensure its operational effectiveness in case of mobilization and deployment. This includes weapons communication systems, surveillance technology, and transportation vehicles. Woo! Modernized Air Force. Following a comprehensive modernization effort, the Swordish Air Force has undergone a substantial transformation and is now considered one of the most capable air forces in the region. With upgraded aircraft and advanced technologies, the Air Force is able to conduct a wide range of operations, including air-to-air -air combat, air-to-ground attacks, and reconnaissance missions. The highly skilled pilots and technicians have undergone extensive training and are well-equipped to handle various situations in times of conflict. We are now an ATO member. The Acacian Treaty Organization, ATO, has emerged as a vital platform uniting nations within its framework, fostering a comprehensive economic defensive alliance by pooling their strengths and resources. Members states of the ATO fortify their collective defense capabilities, creating a united front against potential threats emanating from the CSP. Fluctuating in energy prices. Swordland is currently grappling with fluctuating energy prices, a development causing uncertainty in the domestic trip market. This unpredictability may lead to significant repercussions for Swordland's economy and can influence both domestic policy and international trade relations. Foreign energy manipulation. There's a high degree of foreign manipulation to Swordland's energy sector, threatening the country's energy stability and raising significant concerns about national security and sovereignty. Arcasian influence. Arcasia, superpower in the region, has brought Swordland under its sphere of influence. The strategic move reflects Arcasia's growing influence and demonstrates its ability to shape the political landscape of the region. ATO military support. As per the treaty obligation, the ATO is providing the Swordish Armed Forces new military equipment, assisting in unifying our military logistics, and providing new te training technique in all SAF branches. Strategic Alliance member. Swordland is a strategic member of a large and important international alliance which has increased its prestige and influence on the global stage. The membership in the Alliance underscores Swordland's commitment to promoting regional cooperation and its desire to contribute to global affairs. Woo! Well, we have, we have changed this country a lot. So no matter what happens after we're gone, whether we win an election, whether we even run, whether we lose the election, whether we get assassinated, whatever happens, we've changed this country for better or worse. We've left our mark. But for now, this will be the end of this episode. And I hope you enjoyed. And if you did, like, comment, subscribe, and hit the bell button. And as always, peace.